All right, uh, today we are taking on a little bit more with triangle congruence and CPCTC. So first, what does CPCTC, what does it actually stand for? So it stands for corresponding parts of congruent triangles are congruent. Let me write that out. So corresponding parts of congruent triangles are congruent. So here's the C, P, C, T, and C. So let me say that back one more time. So corresponding parts of congruent triangles are congruent. So what's important here is how are we going to use that? Why do we need that? Well, if we're writing a proof and we're trying to show that two triangles are congruent, we're linking it up using side, 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 or side, angle, side, or HL, or angle, side, angle, or angle, angle, side. So if I can establish that my triangles are identical, that they match, then any other remaining pairs of sides or angles, they have to match too. So let me just write this down. So in proofs, if triangles are congruent, so if we can get the triangles to be congruent, then any other remaining pairs of sides or angles, they have to be congruent too. All right, so again, CPCTC. So if our triangles match, if they are identical, if they are congruent, then any other remaining pairs of sides or angles, they have to match too. So let me give you a quick example. So in example one, I'm giving you three pieces of information. So I'm saying that MA is congruent to BO. So here to here. AP is congruent to OX, here to here. Angle A is congruent to angle O. Okay, so are these two triangles congruent? Why or why not? Well, yeah, they're congruent. We have side angle side. So then if we know that they're congruent, can we then link up angle M to B? Well, yeah. If the triangles match, then all of their remaining pairs of sides or angles, they have to match too. So yes, M would be congruent to B because of C, P, C, T, C. So as we start building proofs now using CPCTC, you're going to see that it is one step following getting the triangles to be congruent. So once we say, yeah, the triangles match, here's why, we're going to say, now we can link up another pair of sides or angles because of CPCTC. Okay, so starting off with A. Let me zoom in a little tighter. I know that these are <laughs> small diagrams. Okay, a little tighter, there we go. All right, so we have two givens. We're told that we have a pair of sides that are congruent and parallel. So I'm gonna lump those in my first given together, my first statement together. So GY is parallel to AR. 
also congruent. And again, I can always split those up. I can write those as two separate statements. That's always an option. And sometimes I do that and sometimes I don't. It just depends on how I'm layering my information. So GY here, parallel to AR, also congruent. And you know I'm a fan of color coding, so I'm going to emphasize my parallels. Okay, look at my transversal. And then think about how to connect the dots. I know that ultimately my end game is different, right? I'm trying to prove why is it that R and Y, why is it that those angles are congruent? So first I want to see, can I get my triangles to be congruent first? So building off of those parallels, I can link up those alternate interior angles here and here. So angle YGA would be congruent to RAG. So YGA to RAG. This should be step one. Okay, so my reason would be alternate interior angles theorem. Okay, so now what else do I see in my picture? I should see that I have that shared side, right? I use that all the time. So right here, give that double tick mark. I can say that segment GA is congruent to segment AG. So here would be the reflexive property of congruence, right? I'm just linking up that common side, that shared side. So now I can see that my two triangles, they have to be congruent. I have side angle side. So let's say that I name one of them GYA. So GYA would be congruent to ARG. My reason would be side, angle, side. So I've gotten my two triangles to be congruent, but now I need to go one more step beyond. So if I want to show that R and Y, those angles are congruent, right, that's where I'm citing CPCTC. So in step five, I can say, well, angle R must be congruent to Y. Since my triangles match any other remaining pairs of sides or angles, they have to match too. So CPCTC corresponding parts of congruent triangles, they are also congruent. All right, next one. All right, so here I'm starting with NP bisects KPI. So that's my starting point, and I want to prove why is it that this segment right here, KN and IN, why is it that they match two? All right, so picking up with that first given. So NP bisects angle KPI, given. So if we're bisecting an angle, where does that lead us to? So this angle here getting bisected, it's being split into two congruent parts. So I can say next that angle KPN has to be congruent to angle IPN. Definition of bisect. Okay, so I have one pair of angles that I've already linked up. Now I'm looking for another connection. So if I look at my other given, good place to tuck that in. So angle one is congruent to angle four, given. Okay, but again, we've seen this before. That puts us on the outside of our diagram. We're on the outside of our triangles. So I have to work my way inside. 
So I can see that these two angles are supplementary. They form a linear pair. So are these right here. So I need to first establish that they're supplementary, and then I can connect the supplements of the congruent angles. So in step four, I'm going to say that angle one and two are supplementary, and so are three and four. Right? I know that because they form a linear pair, and linear pairs are always supplementary. I'm citing the linear pair property. All right, so now that I've established that, now I can connect two and three. Angle two is congruent to angle three. Congruent supplements theorem. Okay, let me give it the triple tick mark here and here. All right, from here, there's really two places I could go. I can say, oh, well, now I recognize that this has to be uh, an isosceles triangle. If it's isosceles, then I know that I have two congruent sides. So I could do that, or I could link up that reflexive part, that common shared side. So either way would be fine. You have options, two places that you could go. Does not matter to me. Okay, I'm going to link up the reflexive part. So right here in six, I can say that PN is congruent to itself. So reflexive property of congruence. And now my triangles, they have to be congruent too. So I can say that triangle KPN has to be congruent to triangle IPN. The path I took is through angle, angle side. So now that my triangles match, now that they are congruent, now any other remaining pairs of sides or angles, they have to match two. So I can get to my conclusion here in step eight and say that KN is congruent to IN because of CPCTC. So corresponding parts of congruent triangles are also congruent. Okay, so again, these first two, what have I seen? Let me zoom back out for a moment. So in both of these two proofs up top, A and B, right, we did the same thing. We proved the two triangles were congruent, and then we went just one step beyond, right? We're using CPCTC. If the triangles match, than any other pairs of sides or angles, they have to match two. Okay, so now we have two more. And in these two, we're actually going one step beyond CPCTC. So let me look at C first. So I'm gonna start with my goal of trying to get the triangles to be congruent, and then I'm gonna think about what I need to do next. All right, let me just, let me just zoom back in. All right, so first I will start with uh, point R is the midpoint of CE. Okay, so if R is the midpoint of CE, right, it bisects that segment, creates two congruent parts here and here. So I can say that CR is congruent to RE, definition of midpoint. Okay, but now I'm at a dead end, so I'm looking for other givens, and I see two more givens here that talk about pairs of sides being congruent. So I'm just going to lump those two together. I can say that CM is congruent to RA. I can see that RM is congruent to EA. And then I mark it. No, 
Okay, so now looking at my picture, I see that I have all three pairs of sides marked. So I have three pairs of corresponding sides that are congruent. I have side, side, side. So I'm at the point right now where I can say, well, these two triangles, they have to be congruent. They have to match. I know that triangle CMR will be congruent to RAE. I have side, side, side. Okay. So now, what is my end game? What am I trying to do? Right, I'm trying to show that CM and RA run parallel. So let me focus on that for a moment. I want these to be parallel. So if those are parallel, then I need to find a pair of angles, in this case, corresponding angles, that are congruent. And if I can show that I have corresponding angles that are congruent, then any, um, then any pathways would be parallel. So any pathways that are being cut by that transversal would have to be parallel pathways. So I can see that right here would have to be that transversal right here. Okay, so the angles that would be corresponding that have to match are gonna be this pair here and here. So I can say in step five, the angle RCM must be congruent to angle ERA because of CPCTC. So my triangles are congruent, then any other remaining pairs of sides or angles, they have to be congruent, such as these right here. And now because those angles are congruent, because they are corresponding angles that are congruent, that forces my pathways to run parallel. So I can reach my conclusion here in step six that CM runs parallel to RA because of the converse of the corresponding angles postulate. So again, I had to get my triangles congruent first. Since my triangles were congruent, I could link up another pair of corresponding angles. And because those angles were congruent, that locks my lines into a parallel position. So I can say that those pathways run parallel. These segments specifically must be parallel. All right, one more. All right, so here I am given angle CBK is congruent to ALK. That doesn't really lead me anywhere, so I'm going to lump that with the other given. So I'm saying CBK right here, that angle, to ALK, that angle. And I also know that BLK right here is isosceles. Okay, so I'm going to put those together. So angle CBK parallel to ALK and triangle BKL is isosceles with a base BL, given. Okay, so what does it mean to be isosceles, right? It means that we have two congruent sides, two congruent angles. My end game is to get down here and show that this is an isosceles triangle. So I must have to show that these two triangles are congruent first. So if I build off isosceles here, that means that these two sides must be congruent right there. So I can say next that BK is congruent to LK. So if the triangle is isosceles, then we have two congruent sides. We have two congruent angles too, it just doesn't help us here. We see sometimes where it does. In this case, we wanna go through the sides. Okay, so now uh, what am I looking for? A pair of sides or another pair of angles? I see the vertical angles right here, so I'll go there next. 
So I can say the angle BKC is congruent to LKA, Vertical Angles Theorem. Okay, so now looking at the two triangles, they are congruent because of angle side angle. So triangle BKC is congruent to LKA. I have ASA, right? Two pairs of corresponding angles and their included sides. So now, now I'm trying to build towards why is it that this triangle is isosceles? Well, this triangle is isosceles if it has two congruent sides or two congruent angles. So where can I build off of these triangles matching? Well, if the triangles match, well then this pair of sides here and here, they have to match too. So I can go ahead and go there next, here to here. So I can say that KC is congruent to KA, CPC, TC. Corresponding parts of congruent triangles are also congruent. So now that I have those two sides that are congruent, now I know that this triangle has to be isosceles. Okay, my reason, if a triangle has two congruent sides, then it must be isosceles. Okay, so on this sheet, again, I tried to give you uh, two proofs where it was just one step beyond. We used CPCTC right after triangle congruence. And then these last two, right, we had to go one more step beyond that. Your homework tonight should be very, very similar to what we did in class today. All right, have a good rest of your day.